Hi everyone, and welcome to the next video in this Outfit Studio tutorial series. Today is lecture day again, and we're going to talk about 3D meshes. We are going to review some potentially confusing topics, but I promise that my goal here is not to torture you. These are just some basic concepts that I think you need to be aware of in order to do your best outfit work. Here is an overview of what we are going to cover in this video. You can use the video chapters or timestamps in the description to skip to specific parts. This is a video for anyone at any experience level who would like to know more about meshes. I'll be explaining in some detail though, so if that's not what you want, then this video may not be for you. I'd like to start off with a definition so we are all on the same page. The word mesh can be used to describe different things related to 3D objects. Sometimes it is used to refer to a whole NIF file. Sometimes it is used to refer to a distinct shape made of vertices that are grouped together. I tend to do both, which is very imprecise of me. I prefer to use mesh in the latter sense, meaning one shape in the Outfit Studio list which also corresponds to one BS tri-shape or nitri-shape in NIF scope. I will try to use NIF instead when referring to the actual NIF file, but please forgive me if I slip up. You can hopefully figure out from context clues which definition is being applied. As you probably know by now, a 3D shape or mesh is created by making dots, or vertices, and connecting them. The lines that connect vertices are called edges. And for Skyrim meshes, vertices are always joined in such a way that they form triangles. Other games or applications may make rectangles or quads and maybe even other shapes when they connect vertices. I don't know much about 3D modeling, so I won't say more than that. But the important point here is that triangles are what we have to worry about for Skyrim. The surface of the triangle is what we call the face. And the faces of all these joined triangles are what you see all around the outside of the hollow mesh shape. In Outfit Studio, when you turn on the pencil to see the vertices of a mesh light up, You've probably observed that they all appear to be connected in a continuous fashion. However, this is not required, and it may not even be true since unconnected vertices can appear connected when they sit close together. A good example of single meshes made of disconnected or discontinuous vertices are boots, gloves, and things like earrings. And you can see here that when you select the one mesh, it's actually made of two separate shapes. So vertices make triangles for Skyrim meshes, and the face of the triangle is what gets painted with the texture file, which is the image that you see. But if you think about the triangles that make up the mesh, there are actually two sides or faces for each one. There is the side that faces out, which is the one you see, and the side that faces in, which looks into the hollow space inside of the mesh. The reason we care about this is that we want all of our texture files to be painting the proper side of the triangle. If it's painting the inside face that points to the hollow space, it isn't going to look right. We need all of our triangles to be painted on the outer surface of the mesh. This is where normals come into play. To quote a definition from the article that I have linked in the description, normals are, quote, vectors perpendicular to the mesh. Huh? I don't really understand that either, so we're just going to agree to keep this simple, if not 100% accurate, and think about normals as the way the triangles face, and we want them to be facing out. Here you can see an example of a mesh with the wrong facing normals. Normals in this mesh are facing to the inside, and that's why the texture doesn't look right. We will be fixing this later when we cover optimizing meshes in NIFScope, 
so I want you to have a rough idea of what normals are. You might not run into this problem often, but you'll need to be able to recognize it when you do. One important note on this, don't confuse mesh normals with texture normal maps. Although they are related, normals are part of the 3D mesh, while normal maps are 2D texture files. I'll finish this section by acknowledging that 3D experts would probably have my head for this simple explanation, but I think it gets the job done well enough for us laymen. For a truly accurate and detailed explanation of normals, you can find some good videos and articles, and I've put links to a couple of resources in the description. The video is particularly good in my opinion. Since we've already jumped into the deep end of the pool by bringing up mesh normals, let's just keep gulping for air and get UV maps out of the way too. To understand UV maps, I want you to picture for a moment a foil-wrapped chocolate candy, like Easter eggs, Easter bunnies, or the little Santas you might get at Christmas. The chocolate is our mesh, usually hollow on the inside, with only a smooth, low-detail shape. And it's the foil wrap on the outside that provides all of the color and detail. This is exactly how our outfit meshes work. The 3D shape itself, the chocolate, is hollow and only has a shape, but no texture. The color and detail, or the foil, is provided by wrapping a 2D image, what we call a texture, around the 3D shape. Now imagine that the texture, the foil wrap, is not aligned properly with the mesh, or the chocolate. It won't matter how amazing the 3D shape is, or how beautiful the 2D image looks. If the texture does not overlay on top of the mesh just right, then your whole outfit is going to look bad and unrealistic. So, how does the computer know the correct way to wrap the texture? This is the job of a UV map. It tells the computer how to arrange the mesh vertices across the flat surface of the texture image. Let me say that again so it sinks in. The UV map shows how the vertices are arranged on the texture file. You can see the UV map for a mesh here in Outfit Studio or here in NIFScope. If you've ever wondered why texture files sometimes look so strange, it's because making a flat picture fit properly on a rounded shape is difficult. Consider world maps and how they can't just be wrapped around a globe. And when you unwrap the picture from a globe, you get a very different looking image compared to a regular flat map. Adding to that issue, you have to make a seam or a cut somewhere along the flat map image in order to wrap it around the spherical globe shape. It's the same with our meshes and texture files. The mesh is usually all one continuous seamless shape, but the UV map has to be cut into seams so that it can become a flat 2D image. Looking at a mesh's UV map, you can see how the vertices are arranged. We talked a bit ago about how vertices in a single mesh do not all have to be connected to each other, as you can see with boots, gloves, and things like earrings. Similarly, the vertices of a single mesh can be split across different parts of the UV map too, as seen here. This is done by creating multiple UV map seams along the mesh. It is an efficient practice because it means we can squeeze more than one image onto a single texture file, giving each part of the mesh its own unique look from just one image file. The vertices on the UV map can be moved around if you need to make the texture file wrap better over your mesh. Usually, it is best for vertices to be arranged in a consistent pattern on the UV map, or the texture may look distorted on the mesh. Importantly, vertex placement on the UV map is completely independent of spatial vertex placement on the mesh, which is a fancy way of saying that you can move vertices on the UV map 
and it won't move them on the mesh itself, and vice versa. You probably won't have to mess with UV maps very often, but you might. So it's good to have an idea of what they are and how they work. Well, we managed to survive mesh normals and UV maps, and I think that's enough for today. But let's take a few minutes to recap the key points about Skyrim meshes. Number one, the word mesh can mean a NIF or a shape within the NIF. Number two, all vertices in a mesh do not have to be connected. Number three, lines or edges join vertices to form triangles. Number four, the triangles or faces are what get painted with the texture. Number five, normals define which side of the triangle gets painted. And number six, UV maps direct how the texture gets painted on. Hopefully, I didn't lose you completely with all of this information. If you are confused, it's okay. And I apologize for covering such complex topics, but I do feel that it's important for you to understand some of these concepts. Don't worry, we will get some hands-on experience with most of this as we go through the series. It might help you to come back again a few times to review this video once we've had additional exposure to the topics I discussed. For now, let's call it a day. Take a break, hug your pet, walk outside, or do whatever you need to do to give your brain a rest. Thanks for hanging in there. This should be the last of our lecture videos, so from here on out it will be much more hands-on doing things. The fun stuff. In the next session, we're going to make our very first mashup, which I'll warn you now is going to be kind of ugly and weird, but it works as a learning tool. Making mashups is really fun, so I hope you'll join me for that project. See you again soon. Bye!